Dear Santa, I know the presents will be smaller this year, and I know they'll be way more expensive. And even if you can't get them because they're stuck on a boat off the port of L.A. somewhere, I'd appreciate anything you could give me. You see, Santa, the government check stopped coming a couple months back, and I've gotten used to getting something for nothing. I'm sure the grifters and hackers in the Philippines miss their Michigan unemployment checks too, Santa. We all do. Of course, some people are still waiting for theirs. If you can't get my stuff off the boat in L.A., then please just bring me a six-pack of beer and a soft pack of cigarettes. That costs $20 and some change at the gas station now, Santa. I used a mound of pennies from the dish near the cash register for the change. The power executives aren't competent around here. So please bring us some competent power executives, Santa. Ones that serve society instead of their shareholders. The wind is blowing hard again today. We're worried. My mother once told me, people don't ask for too much. We ask for too little. Instead of peace on earth, we ask for keys to a new car. But now we can have both, Santa. We can wish for an electric vehicle and put an end to global warming. A piece of paradise parked right inside our garages of Eden. General Motors is promising an all-electric future. So please, Santa, won't you bring General Motors some more taxpayer dollars? They can never seem to get enough free money. Now they say they need hundreds of millions of Michigan's leftover COVID dollars to build a battery plant here. I know, Santa. I know. Jim is already the largest car maker in the United States and the largest car maker in Mexico. GM sells more cars in China than in the United States. GM makes billions in profits every year, but doesn't pay any taxes. But think of the twinkling future, Santa. Think of a sleigh pulled by a 255 kilowatt permanent magnet motor. Oh, the wonderment. So please, Santa, bring Mary Barra a tin cup and bring Governor Whitmer a silver pen so she can sign the legislation to give away our money. But nobody around here seems to know where the governor is, Santa. But I know you do. You know when she's sleeping. You know when she's awake. You know if she's taking a private jet to Florida during a pandemic, for goodness sake. Of course, you can't charge an electric vehicle during a power blackout, Santa. So maybe you should bring us those competent power executives first, come to think of it. But whatever you bring, I would appreciate it. Even a lump of coal would help. Have you seen the price of heating oil, Santa? <laughs> well, it's getting late, Papa. I look forward to your arrival. I'll leave some discount milk and an old slice of fruitcake on the mantle. Just look for the candle in the window to guide you. Because the lights are out on the tree again. Competent show Santa. <laughs> Bring me a guest that calls in on time and a connection that works. Santa. Oh, Charlie, you're asking for too much. Oh, and like producers. My, what? My mother said it's not that we ask for too much; it's we ask for too little. Then why not new studio, new staff, new equipment? Well, not the staff, certainly not. Well, that's what Kay. you just said. I did not say new staff. All right. All right, well, we got new staff. <laughs> well. We got Sag Nasty Santa over here. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, God. He seems angry. <laughs> he, he is. It's a tough time of the season for him, Kim. Hey, Santa, you've been, uh, you, you, you visited a baby Jesus' house. Oh, Kim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, how's your mom? <laughs> she doesn't call me Santa no more. She calls me Daddy. <laughs> Yeah, boy, he's really relevant. Tell your mom I got a present for her this year. Yeah, <laughs> the naughty. We have. Some, oh my god! Do you come down her chimney, Santa? Oh, more than that. <laughs> oh, you're nasty. Oh, Santa. Kids are going to be traumatized. You want to say hello to Rick? Rick? Oh, yeah. Daddy? <laughs> Wait, <what>? Little Daddy? <laughs> Not Big Papa. <laughs> Well, all right, have a drink, Santa. I think I'm going to eat me a Coney. What? Yeah, look at this. 
You never leave home without it. Ah. Oh my. <laughs> Look at this. That's six inches of beauty right there. Ah. <laughs> He's eating his beard. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. It's driven all over. Is he going to move or is he going to be in front of me for the whole show? Yeah, he's not moving now. <laughs> <laughs> we got him off a six mile, which he expects. You should have left him. <laughs> what you bringing me, Santa? What are you bringing me? Oh, uh-uh. man. <laughs> it's hard to talk with a wiener in your mouth. <laughs> We have something newsy to talk about well i want to before we talk about <clears throat> that i want to tell you if you can't afford a present this year you haven't been talking to luke nowacki mm. right strategy for the long-term investor now uh burying your head in the sand hoping good things show up under the tree is no way to plan for the future so call my friend luke nowacki for personal financial advice or professional if you're running a um <laughs> <laughs> Pension fund, what have you? Uh, two four eight six six three four seven four eight. Rational financial advice. Luke Nowacki, Pinnacle Well, two, uh, Pinnacle Well, two four eight six six three four seven four eight. And Santa, where do you get your insurance? Ah, legacy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, when you're bombarded with letters, when your sleigh's not, you needs insurance. When the reindeer are sick, you need health care. You call legacy. I've been telling you how you can uh, get help with your Medicare, and now I'm going to tell you how to save money on all your insurance needs, your home, your car, your life. Life is the best. <laughs> get a life, Santa. Your boat, your RV, your motorcycle, whatever it is. Reindeer, too. They're independent, right? Yes. You shop between 7 and 10 carriers for your insurance, so you're going to get life insurance next week. Yes. While you're down in Florida. Yes. You're going to be in Florida for Don't Christmas. where I'm going to be. Shouldn't you be working? No. I don't. All the kids shitting and pissing on my lap. So <laughs> oh, my God. Off. All right, listen. Well, here's what I need you to do, Santa. 586-209-4106. Tell them I sent you, all right? And just for getting a quote and telling them that I sent you, you'll be in line for a drawing for a $50 gift card, Santa. So go to Legacy Partners and tell them you heard it here. 586-209-4106. Lower your health care bill and get better coverage. Huh? Okay. Now be quiet, because we've got to send this one to David Hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, the holidays can be expensive, and right now, credit card interest rates are at the highest they've been <clears throat> since 1996. Whoa. When baby over here was actually born, you've never seen credit card 96? interest rate this high. Yep, yep. He's oh. never seen it. You've never seen it. Never seen no. it. So Not here's the thing, remember. man. Let me give you some help. Hall Financial is here to help you, millennial, become debt-free. Think about that. Wouldn't you like that? I would love it. I'm telling you right now, get a cash out, refinance from Hall Financial. That's a great way to use the equity in your home. You have a home? Nope. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do your parents? They do. Well, they can help you out, right? To pay off that high interest credit card debt because you do have that. I do. Yep. So, maybe your parents can help you consolidate the debt, dude. You're drowning. I am. I know. Right? So, listen. A free five-minute mortgage review with Hall Financial is all it takes to get you in a better position this holiday season. So, get the money you need now with a cash-out refinance from Hall Financial. Call Hall Financial at 866-CALL-HALL. How do you spell call Hall? (laughs) C-A-L-L space h-a-l-l mm, you have college debt i do mm, you need to consolidate bro yeah. 866 call hall or chat with them online call hall first.com thousands of five-star reviews um let's make sure you know his his mom oh kim she'll call she well, calls me all the time <laughs> there you go hall finance our good friends at hall she finance money on her daddy <laughs> what <laughs> he's just mumbling we don't know it's great <laughs> All right, look, um, Karen. Yes. The spirit of the holiday season. Mm-hmm. I like to tell you a story. Can I tell you just the story of, do. of my of my weekend? I like your stories, Charlie. Thank you. So, okay, it starts like I was hanging Christmas lights on my porch a few years back, and the sun had set, and a guy shambles by, and I assume he's out for his evening constitutional, and he looks at me and he shouts, "Are you Charlie Leduff?" 
And I said, sure I am, brother. And he said, Merry Christmas. And he walked up, you know, to my porch uninvited. And I should have known because he placed a subpoena in my outstretched and unsuspecting hand. <laughs> You've been served, he said, with that dirty little smile. So the guy clearly get, gets off on handing out notices to appear before the United States District Magistrate during the high holidays. So since then, I do not open doors during the Christmas season, I do not answer the bell, and I do not check voicemail from unknown phone numbers. But still, it's the busy season for a big city reporter. If you have one number, then you have a thousand. And so a certain amount of cynicism needs to be set aside for the holidays. People like me, like you, uh, are in some small way one of Santa's helpers. If there is one person in need, they most surely have a cousin in need, and indeed that cousin has a cousin in need, and so on and so forth. And this being the season of peace on earth, it would be a sin to ignore the people to whom you've entrusted your number, and their cousins, and their cousins after them, and so on and so forth. So looking in my mailbox, there are plenty of hopefuls right, right in here. There's a man I know who works for Wayne County. He asked my advice about what he can do about the unsympathetic family court judge who won't listen to his side of things. Attached in the email is a ream of public filings, which he assures me proves that he is indeed the wrong and aggrieved party in the arrangement. I read the filings, but like the judge, I too am unmoved. So I write him back, advising him that the next time, maybe he should simply use a condom. The man agrees, though he insists there's nothing more joyful in his life than the weekend he gets to spend with his children once a month. How do I know the guy's taking my advice? I do not. I simply take satisfaction in speaking truth to a man who receives precious little of it. Here's another message, this one from a mother who has no money to purchase gifts for her children. There are more messages like this than you might imagine, my friends. Things are tough in America. I think of Myron Benford, the black Santa, who has tooled around the east side of Detroit for the better part of 50 years in a sleigh built from a chopped convertible, passing out gifts to the less fortunate children of the city. Maybe he has some presents, but I haven't seen him since before the pandemic. And this weekend, Santa's garage was silent. No sign of St. Myron. So I called some mutual acquaintances. No one seemed to know what's happened to him. But remember, it's people like Myron that make a city a city. Not bricks, not buildings, but people who care about people. And if you're out there, Santa, and you see this, you hear this, please call me. I miss you. As for the woman without the presents, I stopped by with some money this weekend and a promise of a honey-banked ham that I got to get now. She gave me a big hug, and I felt really nice. I got another letter. A woman tells me she had lost her home to the Detroit Land Bank. She had rented the Cape Cod since the 80s. She raised four children there. They're all grown now. About 10 years ago, her landlord let the house lapse into foreclosure, but the woman stayed and kept the house a home. But the authority, which had taken ownership of the property, told her now she's got to leave. So she wrote me in distress. And so I knocked on her door this weekend on my Christmas rounds. The house was abandoned, the windows gone, an old minivan sagged in the driveway. The woman had grown children at least, so there's a place to stay. And I wrote her back to promise my help in the new year. Times are hard indeed. But if you squeeze your eyes really hard, coal begins to shine like diamonds. Remember, the meaning of life is to be found in one another, the estranged father and his children, black Santa and the needy children, the houseless mother and the children she raised. That is surely the greatest gift of all, one another. But still, I'm not answering my door to strangers. <laughs> it's pretty cool, Charlie. But that's what it's about. I, I thought of you. You did? Why? When, just because, like, you're, you know, in this season, it's probably nice to say something honest and true to each other. You're one of the most giving, soulful, deep-hearted humanists. You, 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 know, I, you know, you don't take shit from people, but you love people. You're kind. Well, thank you, Charlie. I appreciate that. I really do. If there were, you know, if there's more like you, then... 
but but you've summed it up. I mean, and I am. I try to be nice. I try to be thoughtful. I try to be giving, but I do have my limits. So when we get to those limits, then there's another side. But I do. I mean, we this year we uh, you know decided I'm going to cut down on some of the gifts and go and impact people directly. You know, we've got our Secret Santa packages with cash, and we're just going to just. Just help folks. You strangers know? or yep, strangers. Yeah, really. You know, pick up pick up their grocery bill in the market. Uh, if we see them in a restaurant, or if you just and, and and I just I said a prayer and ask that I be led to people who sincerely need. You know, because some people are out and they're and they're not, and that's just a chance that you have to take. But this is something that you know I do all year long. I don't just do it around the holidays. I mean, I literally, if I see a need, I will respond, and I and I believe that I I. I'm able to do because I do, you know, I give because I can and I can because I give. So, you know, it's interesting because mm-hmm. there's a group called the Centurions. You heard them from mm-hmm. Dearborn. They, mm-hmm. they do such things for people. Right. And they asked me to speak at a dinner uh, in the spring and they said, there's an honorarium, mm-hmm. you know, they pay you a little right. bit. And uh, what charity would I like it to go to? And I, I said, well, I'm not going to pocket the honorarium, but right. we, do charity differently mm-hmm. around here. We yeah. we find people that we know that can use and we cut out the middleman. Yep. Like the firemen, you know, we made sure. Your... I mean, that's how you do things. And and somebody asked me earlier, they said, you know, my husband and I are going to write a big check to a nonprofit. Do you know of any? I said, there's 70,000 in the state of Michigan. Put it in somebody's hand that can use it. You know, by the time you get through <laughs> administrative costs, the CEO, and I'm not saying that they don't make a difference, but in this day and age, there, there's so many loopholes. People don't need to stand in line for help. They don't need to, you know, you see somebody in the grocery store, you can kind of see if they're, just go pick up, just pay for their groceries, pay mm-hmm. for their meal in a restaurant. You see somebody walking down the street, they don't have to ask, you know. Yeah, I'm getting just, cynical just, of it all. I mean, that's exactly yeah, right. I'm but just getting cynical it. of all the... I am too. It doesn't work because if that were the case, more of our problems would have been addressed mm-hmm. and they're not. People make money from people having problems. So they're not in the business of solving them. What's the old saying around here? There's a lot of money in poverty. Yep, <laughs> it is. You know what I mean? Hey, Santa. Hey, you damn right. <laughs> yeah. You, you still awake, Santa? <laughs> I am a little bit. <laughs> I got raw ass from this. There, there's, 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 by the way, does Todd's phone work? Yeah, I was watching him drive around the golf course. I, I'm seeing he was being driven around the golf oh, course. Even better. Okay, there's a difference. It doesn't look like it's working now. And he's chomping on a big cigar. Um, yeah, I, I met a kid yesterday. His name's Jack. Mm-hmm. Parents listen to the program, and um, I think he gets picked on as the teacher's pet. And, and why is that? Mm-hmm. Because he's smart. Mm-hmm. And I wanted Jack to call in, but he's smart enough not to call in because you know, bad Santa's here. Mm-hmm. But um, he's a suck ass. <laughs> Jesus. Be nice to Jack, Santa, or I'm going to have to flip my switch and go after you. Be nice to Jack. What is wrong with being a smart kid like Jack is, Santa? Nothing, nothing at all. It's not very good. I mean, bad. <laughs> you little shit. You ought to be drinking booze and smoking cigarettes. You'll end up like him. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm proud of Jack, you know, so if you're listening, Jack, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you just a thumbnail, Charlie. Yeah. I, I was picked on. I'm not going to call it bully, but I was picked on in school early on, hated it. So trust me, all the people that pick on you will come back to you at some point. Some of the people that used to pick on me, call me at one point in my life, they needed help. They needed a job. They need a, those tables always turn, Jack. So continue to be who you are. Stay true to who you are and all that your parents have taught you. And just, you know, bullies have issues. Don't let their issues become your issues. Go on about your business. You'll be fine. Be smart. That'll yep. get you Just there. continue to be who you are. Seriously. I see, I see, uh, ask the lawyers driving around. Hey, uh, you there, Todd? Hey, I'm with you. Hey, where, where you, you're not with me. Were you in the Bahamas? What's going on here? <laughs> no, I'm down in Florida, Charlie, with my boys. Oh, with your boys. All right, listen. Um, yeah. Um, what hole you on here? What are you doing here? What are you, 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 you teeing up? What's going on? I'm on, you know, I had started off a little rough. I went bogey, 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 and then I just had two pars in a row. So I feel good. Right now. Okay. So how about this? You're feeling so good. Can you stop walking around and pay attention to me for a minute? I'm paying attention with you. Go I ahead. Can, I can barely hear you. Hold it, hold it, hold the microphone. I got a few things to ask, Todd. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm calling this segment Ask the Lawyer. <laughs> Question number one, Todd, is right. we got a criminal investigation into the former House Speaker, Lee Chatfield, up here in Michigan. You know, you're down there in Florida, right? That started with like sex and, and political donations and lobbyists and whatnot. And as the Attorney General has now begun to look into it, we're getting signals of other high-level government officials, appointees, and lobbyists that might be caught up in it. Now, a lower court judge has ruled that these subpoenas, these search warrants, they must be given to the media because in Michigan, there's a 56-day law. After 56 days, they got to become public. But the attorney general's office is arguing that uh, they should be sealed because... They don't want to embarrass people named in the investigation. What do you read into that? Is that right? Well, you got to know the law, Charlie. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here so I can speak. Thank but God. The law is stop. The law is simple. You, you, 56 days, but it's an automatic renewal. So the automatic renewal, Charlie, is is that during the pendency of the investigation you continue to keep your investigation private. I don't want law enforcement to, if they're doing their job, I don't want them to get spoiled by, uh, you know, the, the investigation spoiled because confidential information to help them during the pendency of that investigation gets made public. That doesn't make sense, and that's not what the statute says. So the judge made an error, and that error uh, should be corrected. But just think about it from a common sense standpoint. If I'm investigating you, Charlie, and I do a search warrant on your cell phone, and I get your text messages, and I see that your text messages are going to Johnny, and Johnny is part of the co-conspiracy of the crime, I want to go interview Johnny. I don't want Johnny, uh, and I want to catch Johnny off guard. I don't want Johnny to have your text messages back and forth ahead of time. What sense does that make if I'm trying to investigate crime, right? So it doesn't. So the statute is an automatic renewal. Um, and there's uh, two other parts to the statute. When you can uh, do a FOIA request and have it granted, um, as it relates to the court file, you know, Charlie, the court file is open to the public. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep that one separate as well. And then the other statute is that for law enforcement and prosecutors. So it's a simple, simple uh, thing. It's just a misreading. I, I agree with Mike Frezza, who is the assistant AG, and you would like him. He's a real deal. He's not some hack. He's been around for a long time. He knows what he's doing. He's brought down some serious criminals that, you know, no one ever talks about. But at the end of the day, he's the one in charge of the investigation. He's going at it. If you want to talk about the crime in and of itself, I, you know, I'm seems to me that it's slow right now and I don't understand that reason that 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 raises in my law enforcement brain a defense attorney brain there's something not right there's something not there what but do you mean that's uh, we'll find that out later what do you mean slow the investigation's um, going slow yeah when it started February of 2022 we're in December um, you know, this is not one of those, unless they got a big ring, unless they got a lot of people in this ring, then I understand it's slow. But you got one guy, they probably should have had charges by now on one guy. But is, but, but is the avoidance of embarrassment of those people that may be subject to the investigation a reason not to disclose that to the public who at some point, if they are elected officials or people in that, in that circle, maybe have a right to be aware yeah, so embarrassment is not a defense to making something public, right? That's what I thought. Um, that happens all the time. So, no, the, the, the rule is is you're, you're allowed to keep things secret during the pendency of the investigation. So they're in the pendency of their investigation, and they're going to they're gonna follow the law and keep it secret. So It'll come saying, out. You're, you're saying, It'll come out someday. Someday, yeah, but you're saying something smells, and I agree because I'm talking to the guy that was doing Flint. Like, you know, I've, I've watched the land bank. I watched Kwame Kilpatrick. Hang, like, sure. hang, hang out for a second, Charlie. Okay, I can, oh, I'd just keep going. From a, shooting. But yeah, but he, he got a, he's, <laughs> he's teeing up here. Priorities. 
He's playing with his balls. The, the sky is blue. That's cool. Yeah, he's playing with his balls. But, but, didn't, but didn't Dana Nessel say that, you know, that, that wouldn't be disclosed because of potential embarrassment to the people yeah, that's that a, were... That's, that's a my, ridiculous excuse. That's, that's my right thing. On. So maybe does... Well, again, let me say this. Okay. Uh, he's yes, talking... I know... That's, you're, you're right on that. That's not a proper excuse. It's not about embarrassment. It's about the investigation. So Frezza, Frezza said in court, right, because mm -hmm. they appealed making it public, he said that the investigation involves a series of former Michigan officials, mm -hmm. current officials, lobbyists, governmental mm -hmm. appointees at high levels, and other governmental employees. So this could go all the way up into the Whitmer administration. Perhaps. Right. right. So Possibly. Doubtful, but possibly. Well, I'm, I'm quite sure it does if it's, a, if it's appointees. Why do you say doubtful, Todd? What makes you dismiss it? So I didn't easily? say it was Whitmer. You know, I just said people. Yeah, no, I, I just don't think. I, yeah, I just don't see. Um, there's two different, you know, parties here. You got the uh, you got the Republicans and the Dems, right? So at the yeah. end of the day, I don't see. I don't see this Republican uh, senator tied up with. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, Lee Chatfield but, was the Republican Speaker of the House, and it's funny, everybody kind of knows, quote-unquote, the guy was on the take, lived a high lifestyle, was time, drink, yeah. drinking champagne and mm -hmm. had uh, apartments, you know. Like, a lot of hotels, loved and, hotels. You know, yeah. you know, and uh, from his own family, like going, like going to the coochie That's bar. That's creepy. It's because yeah. it was his sister-in-law, well, right? That, that's interesting what Todd just said, yeah. though. Yeah. It's, going back to that, it's it's one of two things. Either they don't have enough stuff. Because so think of um, Sam Bakeman Fried and how quick he was arrested because they could nail him. It's like, oh, this is this is a home run. So either she doesn't have enough to get him yet, or it's this vast reaching conspiracy. <laughs> and to his point, uh, the Whitmer administration to be tied up with Lee Chatfield. It's it's doubtful. So I'm kind of leaning towards they don't have enough to Dude, prosecute. Dude, it's, it's Lansing. I don't. I don't. Yeah, but it's well, not about well, the. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's it's Lansing. Right. I'm not going to bore people with. If you want to know how point A ties into sure. point B yeah. with such and such, man, this this is a swamp up there. Yeah. yeah. And it's not about nobody's trying to tie it to the governor or anybody but particularly her in her. But it yeah. doesn't matter. But all those people entered. Every yes. it, it has nothing to do with party. And anybody it, that says yes. that there's a clear right. separation based on party right. is incorrect. It has, so it has they to do all with know each other. The everybody's it does. on the take. They are. And everybody enough. knows each other. Everybody talks to each other. Everybody's cutting deals with each other. So it could very well be possible that there are people on both sides that are involved yes. in this. And, and when that's I say yet to everybody, I mean hype, that's hype, hyperbolic. Yes, I don't, exactly. You know, but Not exactly. Sure. It's, I, I've never it's, seen anybody in law enforcement concerned about embarrassing somebody. In but that's what was said. And that was no, that was a concern. You're right. It was bullshit. Now, Todd, I want to I want to go to... So I guess we wait and see. I want to go to the next question. Ask the lawyer, um, Senator Debbie Stabenow, right? Took a lot of money from Sam Bankman Freed, the goofball criminal, FTX fraudster. Yeah, alleged fraudster. fraudster. Okay, well, let's just do a fucking man, the fraudster yeah. who doesn't own a long pair of pants. Oh, you got to say alleged. He was just arrested. You got to yeah, get him. Yeah, it's alleged. Well, okay. you know, was he going to come get it? He's not got any money left to come get it. I mean, he's got shit. nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, Todd, he basically donated to Democrats and specifically the important ones, which stabbing all would be because she's in charge of. Um, she's going to write the law. Coming up with laws to. To, uh, oversight of crypto the umbrella mm -hmm. of the cryptocurrency so she took about thirty thousand dollars from this guy she says she's going to donate it to charity can you donate to charity money that your campaigns received fraudulently by an alleged criminal so you didn't know it was fraudulent uh the money is already uh they can want that the money back can you stop nope. walking around? You're going in and out. I'm he's trying sorry. to play golf. He's trying Charlie. to he's trying to find his ball. He wants to play golf. <laughs> he lost the ball. You know what he's doing? He's looking for balls. That's what he's doing. That's what he does with his time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, at the end, Charlie, it's really simple. One, they can give the money back to the to the donor, but that money is seed, right? So that would go right back to law enforcement, or the money to an earmark that is. Um, kosher with the, with the campaign finance rules and giving it to uh, you know lots are permissible. You can donate. 
All right, fuck. So uh, translation, it seems like, you know, she didn't know the money was fraudulent when she accepted it. It sounds like well, that, I'm that's thinking, kind of the issue. I'm, I'm thinking but the this, right you, you don't do. give it to a charity. You just set it aside and exactly. wait. Exactly. I don't know why that's so hard. But, but because, because it's a public perception that public I'm getting perception. rid of it. That's, no what, one, that's it. No, no that's one will it. ever question giving money to charity. Yeah, Except but they should us. do that too. No, okay. they absolutely well, should. What's it, the motive look, behind If she's going to have to give it back, then you're, not, you're now going to have to give twice as much money back, right? Yeah. Oh. And then isn't that illegal because somebody <laughs> donated to a campaign? I, I just thought I thought that was really it's really stupid. Of her to say But everybody's that, yeah. quick to like, okay, I'm, I didn't know I'm backing away. I'm washing my hands of it, you know, just for appearance purposes. And, yeah. Eh, okay, Todd, you with us? Let's ask the lawyer the next question. Let me, are you there, Todd? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, boom. Now, the Twitter files have come out. And look, Twitter is a private entity, so they can censor you as they wish, as far as I know. But mm. it's now coming to light that they were working hand in hand, not only with the FBI to squelch mm. speech, but also with state governmental actors, people in California, Lord knows what else. Is that illegal? Is there, is there something antithetical to the first amendment when governmental entities are trying to squelch free speech no um so it, it private entity would work uh, with law enforcement to do certain things to, you know whether it is to quell or quiet or tamper or speech one thing but bottom line they're trying to find out who's committed act. I don't know the extent of the investigation, um, but we know what we do. All right, you know what? This connection sucks. Get back to your <laughs> golf game, man. Go play with your balls. Yeah, go play with your rotten balls. Thank you, Santa. Well, I tried with you earlier. <laughs> I did talk to you about the Flint case with the uh, two boys. The two kids, yeah. At, yeah, at some point in time, that mother, uh, you know, Crystal is struggling and life is different. Trajectories have changed there all the way. That's a case that you should be on all day long. Okay, we'll pick it up after your holiday, okay? Call me when you Thank get back you. to town. God bless everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to all. All right. Happy Thanks, holidays, Todd. Todd. Happy holidays, Todd. <laughs> you know, if I were in trouble. Okay, strippers down there. <laughs> I'd call Todd. Huh? I'm saying I'd call him. I, 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 if if if, for, if you're ever in trouble, I mean his. He's a smart lawyer. He's a well, smart yeah, it, lawyer. it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah, it's not only that, but just his approach, his ability to hone in on. Anyway, that was just my two cents. But okay, yeah, he's a, he's a good lawyer, man. Yeah, you know, he is. and he's smart. He's right about that. But you know, you you keep that powder dry, and you know, put out your. I get it, but at the same time, if that if but if but if it's the case that would be the reason then that's what the AG should have said and not not doing it because of risking embarrassment for that's those people involved. That's what you're saying now, but here's the other thing as well. What? A judge should not privately and not tell the media who's actually suing for these documents to be open. That's true. Should not yeah. just be yeah. all by yourself, go, we're going to zip it up. What the judge should do is look at what it's going to be released and then say, get in here and tell me where your investigation is. Is this person part of the criminal investigation? If not, if it's just embarrassing shit, like mm -hmm. I went to the titty bar with this creep. Oh, well. That's it. Yeah. That's a governmental. Yeah, because yeah. I think people have a right to know. I mean, when it does not compromise the investigation. But people need to know not only who they elect, but who their elected officials hire and the behavior that these people, you know, execute in that in that in that position. I think people should know. So if you want to know how Lansing works, ladies and gentlemen, our hard-earned tax dollars and our the fake money that D.C. is printing, the COVID money, comes to Michigan. We don't know what to do with it. We still got $7 billion we haven't spent. And they get together in this 11th hour, no, 13th hour budget, mm -hmm. right? A billion dollars of pork, a billion dollars for special interest development deals that not even legislators know they're voting mm -hmm. on. And that's just the highest level of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and the governor's office all determining what this little deal is going to be. And you, you don't think 
that there's crossbreeding yeah. and relationships and that people that run the purse strings of this state, their parents weren't in government. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and, right. and big yeah. business or lobbying yeah, or you're yeah. right mm-hmm. and and do not be fooled by people that appear to uh, be adversaries in public. That has nothing to do with what goes on behind closed doors. I'm talking about at the city level, at the state level, at the federal level. Surely, all of that is for public perception. It has nothing to do with the conversations and the deals cut when the doors are closed. No doubt about it. You know, the fr- one of the frustrating things about this whole Lee Chatfield is that you know we're still what one of two states that has no open records. Is that what it is? Where um, the the legislative branch and the executive branch are exempt from mm-hmm. me getting the freedom of information. They're Exactly. emails and that's crazy how they're determining these deals and like who talked to whom but that's were, crazy they were so close to repealing that um i guess i'll call him friend of the show senator mcbroom ed mcbroom who's mm-hmm. been on I, I love the guy i think he's really good real smart guy was so confident that this would pass and it passed the house no problem and then just stopped the first time around Whit- on? whitmer ran on re- yeah. rescinding oh, that. transparency and we got yeah. nothing and she's saying it again, and we got nothing. And nobody remembers, and nobody says anything. And it, I, they're all the same to me. The only thing that matters to me stalled in the Senate. Yeah, I, are, 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 are the people around me, the greater community, the people that are needing help? Yep. You know, this this is what this whole system's designed for. And and they are <laughs> the last on the list of recipients. That's such bullshit. Santa, bring us some honest politicians. Honest. So they all ask me for amnesty for Christmas. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to wrap that up. Weird. You know, they, I talk to the East Coast media, and they're, they they want to go back and look at, like, the Whitmer, Dixon race and all that. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why are we – who's, who's reading that? Yeah. And, and I go yeah. – and I asked, do you think Whitmer knew some they're, – they're, they're um, ramping up for a run? Mm-hmm. And this is what the East Coast elite media tell me, that, that the Democrats feel good about Biden. <laughs> they feel good about wait, it. Like, wait, they, wait, wait. like they didn't get wiped out. What so. Democrats? Because you look but at any Charlie, poll, and in every poll is like, yeah, we really don't want but, him running but, again. But okay, let's take it back to the state for a second. Proposal 3 won the election for Whitmer, for Dana Nessel, for Abortion? Yes, but Proposal 3 is what got people to the polls. There's something else. Okay. Money. That, that is true. That's true. Absolutely true. I, absolutely Because they wouldn't have, the turnout wouldn't have been there. But then you gave me all these Trump cuckoos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they got wiped out around the country where abortion wasn't on the ballot. That's true. So maybe we don't want Biden, but we, you know, there, there right. are people that do. God bless you. And maybe we don't want Trump. There are people that do. God bless you. But if there's something else. So these these people that are happy with Biden, what are they? People who? high ranking like Democratic but who is officials? That, though? They don't. They're in senior homes. <laughs> I, I mean, no. but 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 I, I, who though? And I'm I'm just saying everything just feels well, the es- very the establishment because if if the yeah. boss wants to okay. run again, you're going to get out of the way, or the party's going to eat you up. Then they might want to look back at you know 2015 and 2016 when they decided Hillary was the person to run for him, and it backfired right in their face. What the fuck are we going to do? You know what I want for Christmas? I want money that's worth something. I want streets that are safe and schools that work. In a road that doesn't fuck my car up. That's so simple, yeah. Charlie. Oh my God! <laughs> Santa, bring me some, bring me some roads in a school. I was gonna say, Charlie, you've got Santa and Jesus here. If you can't get it, I don't think it's, I think it's possible. <laughs> hey, speaking of getting it, house, Kim? <laughs> we have a dirty Santa. Yeah, I'm happy. What? I got a couple texts. Ooh. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Your secret safe with me. <laughs> Okay, listen, I, uh, I want to buy a new car. Okay. And I went. And Electric? I got, no, no. <laughs> and they're building I, new gas I, stations I, all around. That's another story. I just violated the first rule. I asked a question I knew the answer to. So I, I go in. I never bought a new car in my life. Never had a new car really? ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't need it. I fix my own. I think it's a, a waste of time, mm-hmm. a waste of the environment. That's just me. You know, I mean, I just like, drive old. And... Um, I finally go in and I get a price locked in and, and I'm guaranteeing this price. And I put $500 down. Okay, lock it. And then it's finally at the dealership and the price they're telling me is 15% higher. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, what? What happened? But you locked it in. I thought I did, but then I'm looking at the, at the fine print and like, no, there's no lock and it's subject to change. And do, Am I entitled to my 500 bucks back? I don't like that. Yeah, then you I should. Would think so. You should. You should either make them give you the price that they promised and or that you had. And the things that I wanted in it. No, they're, see, yeah. I wanted it simple too. I don't want these things. I don't okay. want a garage door opener. My, my garage, when you open it, the door falls off. <laughs> I don't need a garage door opener. You know the automatic start? Yeah, yeah, On yeah, cold days? Yeah. I'm against it, environmentally what? speaking. I don't want to burn mm -hmm. excess gasoline just to warm my fucking ass. I'll wear the coat till the car gets warm. So I know I didn't order that. It's antithetical to me. But now I gotta have it? But it's a lot of stuff, Charlie, that's standard on cars now say, that yeah. you can't. No, no, this is in the thing going, this is part of the package you ordered. I'm like, that's not what like I ordered. a special ordered. package? Like, you know, you, you get little extra bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want chrome, you order chrome. Yeah. yeah. If you want the bigger motor, you order the bigger motor. If you want the automatic transmission, you order. I didn't order this. I don't want the, no, you have to, the, you the get rubber what you undercoating. Well, you I don't have to want buy it. it. You have to get what you want, Charlie. Do I get my 500 back? You should get your 500 you should. back. You shouldn't yes. have to buy it. I just That's think ridiculous. I should get what I asked for. And, and you know, I just, I'm not saying I'm being chiseled. I just don't like how this is playing. You out. are being chiseled, but you should get what you want and you should get your money back. I mean, everything is a hustle. Everything is a hustle. Ken, Kenneth on uh, <laughs> Facebook wants to know if, uh, if you got power windows or if you're still going to do the hand crank. <laughs> I don't know, brother. But I didn't order any extra yeah. windows, man. So if it's hand crank, I'm doing hand crank. Do they I, make those? Still? I like hand crank. You know what? You know why you want a hand crank? Why is that? Because sometimes the electric motor goes out on the door and then you're screwed. That's true. How do I know that? At that 77 Fleetwood. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> that could be because it was a 77. Do they still make manual windows in cars? I, I mean, is I that even an know. option anymore? Do you know you, you have to pay extra to get an ashtray? Yeah. They don't even have lighters in cars anymore, Charlie. You have to pay extra for a lighter. Wow. Well, yeah. How about know. you just give me the lighter and I put the lighter in the glove box if I don't need the lighter? I got to pay like $200 for the lighter thing? Yeah, you should get your money the back. The filament? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Filament? <laughs> so what were you looking at, Charlie, if we can ask? Huh? What kind of vehicle? I, 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 I'll, I'll let you know. I'm, 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 not, dis I'm, not, I'm not decided what I'm going to okay. do about this. Yeah. All right. Okay, Fair it's a enough. Jeep. It's a Jeep. Yeah, okay. they, they've got a lot hmm. of things you can add and take off. Oh, Mr. Positive's on the line. Oh, 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 we'll have some positive. We need to give out the phone number. Mr. Positive has it. And he's gone. No. <laughs> See, it's not just me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It stopped ringing uh, as I was about to add. So give us a call back, Mr. Positive. Or it was your mom giving oh, crank there calls, huh? Right. There he is. Mr. Positive? Mr. Positive, what's yeah. your beef? Do you have a, do you have a beef because you're positive? Yes, I do. Um... Real quick, you guys, when you talk about uh, Twitter, can you articulate for me the parameters of what free speech is and should be? Um, should there be constraints on it? Or is there a bromide or a... Um, uh, a He's trying to think of big words. ...that says that only if I say something that actually directly hurts Mark, Karen, and Charlie, should I be... But then that has to apply to everybody. Well, you actually, and at the end of you the actually day, understood that question? Yeah, I mean, I see, but, but you can't have it both ways. And, and the thing about it is, is that everything is offensive to someone. And so right. where are the parameters? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it. I, look, Twitter's a private company. That's true. Yep. There's no free speech. Like, you, you know, you're at a newspaper. There's no free speech there, right? The newspaper's going to decide what goes in. If mm -hmm. people don't like right. it, they're going to sue the newspaper and you're going to court. So not... Same thing. No, not, every, every decision they make based on that is a business decision. I just, I just find but, it fucked up that they got a secret little chat room with the FBI. Up. The FBI, who we fund, is going to them going, uh, the thing that this person said on your account is problematic. This thing that the person said on your account well, but, um, could but, have some ties to misinformation. But nothing is private. This anymore, person, Charlie. the FBI said, according to the Twitter mm -hmm. release... Um, may violate your standards. Who's the fucking FBI to be hall monitoring what's going on on Twitter? Let, let me ask you this, Charlie. Who Who is worse in that scenario? Is it Twitter for allowing the FBI to do that and sit in, sit in on this stuff? Or is it the FBI for doing it? My, my take, and then Carol Giffords, first of all, fuck you, FBI. Yeah. Stay out of it. Number two, fuck you, Twitter. <laughs> you yeah. are bullshit. 
You're phony. You're doing stuff quietly that you say you're not doing publicly. Sure. You're lying under oath, right? You're all a nice little click. It's a hustle, Charlie. Just like and and but that like you Mark see said. It with us. But like Mark said, that's a private company. So you know when you you see Elon Musk and he's on Twitter and he's responding when people are saying I'm going off, my numbers are dry. That, that's his. He has a right to do it. Now you've got our FCC rules. You know, do they oversee? Where's the oversight that he has in terms of compliance? But when you start talking about saying something that's offensive to someone, I mean, where do you draw the line? I mean, wouldn't yeah. wouldn't a mega church be offensive to an atheist? I mean, at some I point, want, well, I want Elon Musk to buy Facebook, and I want to know what's going on there. I want Elon Musk to buy YouTube, right? Because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like Google is a monopoly. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing? Wait a minute. I know what I feel it directly. None of, none, of, none of what we do is private. I mean, who, you know, when you read the terms of use, does well, anybody really read no. those? That, that's <laughs> no. f- but I know, because Twitter's showing you that state officials have a direct line yeah. into who gets to speak and who doesn't. And I know I felt it directly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel they do that with traditional media as well. I mean, we've seen oh, it. With it's it's yeah. a pick and choose scenario. Yes. It doesn't make it doesn't uh, absolve Twitter of those you know social media type sins, mm-hmm. but it it happens all over the place. It does. And maybe this illuminates it. Can I ask you another social media question? Yeah. Um, th- this whole you know TikTok's back up where a lot of states and federal agencies are banning people to have it on their phone. To me, that just seems like posturing because they're about six years too late. On this, is why it, are they doing that? Well, because they're afraid China has uh-huh. all this data, but doesn't I just? Feel, but everybody I, I else does. I'm very cynical. I just feel like everybody's got my data everywhere. They do, they do. Uh, so is that just is that just a political posturing? Like we're doing something about this they evil corporation? About it. Well, I don't think it's political posturing. I think it's it's true and it's problematic. But the horse has left the barn. That's what I mean. Yeah. So now what? But what's what do you see problematic about it? About. TikTok. About the, the Chinese having people's day but they they built your phone. Well, you don't I'm, think they? I'm, I'm at, well, I'm, you know th- what they built the phone, but they stole the the blueprints. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well. So like the, the web of human life is now being encodified, and you don't know where it could go. You don't know. But you don't know that anyway. Where the tendrils, where the crevices are. You, but you co- don't know that anyway, Charlie. That's Charlie. why you stop it, Charlie. What, Mister Positive? Hey. What? Hey, real quick, I was almost on Cuomo, and I brought this up, and I was going to mention you for having thanking him that you were, gonna, you were on a show. And I said, when you hear MSNBC, Fox, CNN, he was and they give Cuomo. their point of view, I'm always going, I need to hear the opposing point of view when you're talking about what you're talking about on MSNBC. What? And that's okay, why I, I love when you're on. I was almost on Tucker. Too. When you <laughs> when you listen to MSNBC or Fox, they're only giving that narrative yeah. to support their thoughts. Of course. What is this breaking news? Yeah, but that's the same. <laughs> that's the to. same thing with any platform, though. You just said what Mark right. just said. And it, yeah. it bothers the hell out of me. You why? Guys. No, it because doesn't. You're never going to get to the truth. No, well, only through dialogue. The truth is relevant. Yeah, what are you What are you talking about? Like you you're going to watch Meet the Press and expect to get to the truth? It's TV, well, dude. There's no you. truth. But it's, what's the truth anymore? It's infotainment. What's the truth? Yep. Yes. It's just right. infotainment. Uh, just cons- oh. consume as smartly as you can all of it, or and as think much for of it your as you can and handle. think for yourself. Yeah. And, and you let don't... me go back to this. Like Elon Musk just you know put out uh, you know a poll saying, "Do you want to me to drop off to <laughs> to drop out as the CEO of this shit?" And uh, you know, 15 point spread. They want him to leave. I don't want him to leave. Here's what I want him to do. I want him to just shut down Twitter. I, wanna, <laughs> I just want to. I just want to edit button. That's all. Just <laughs> fuck all these motherfuckers. Out of you look at this thing like a bunch of dopes. I just want him to shut up. Yeah. Run your company and shut but up. But it's his. He has a right to do. Listen, this guy is so. He's rich. It's a toy for him. So that's what he's playing with. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I I prefer. I, I don't care about Elon Musk. I'm looking at people on Twitter. You're garbage. Mm-hmm. You're gar. I, I see what they do. They sit there. Every day and think of some shitty thing to say to keep their numbers up. Yep. It's the same assholes trending. And I'm like, another dummy, another dummy, another dummy. I another, like Twitter. Another pussy, <laughs> another softy, another like you don't do anything, but you know, sit around at home. But 
that's not true, they, Charlie. It is true. I like Twitter. I do. Well, I like I Twitter. I can't stand it. So, but I, I think a good point here, Karen, is that Twitter can be what you want to make it, right? But, but you're going to find... You can follow gonna, and ignore whoever you want exactly, to. Exactly, because you're going to find... But no one does that. Well, you're I don't gonna, follow anybody. Yeah, you're going to find crazy opinions and people, but now that everybody has a platform, everybody wants their voice yeah, to be but, heard at somebody else's expense. But who expense. wants to hear it? No one. That's why yeah. God never answers your prayers, because he ain't listening to you. <laughs> Jesus, I, I am. <laughs> they, track, they can't track his jet, but you little bastards... Track my sleigh, <laughs> son of a bitch. Oh, Talking Santa's about pressure. <laughs> Santa's Santa, angry. Are they doxing you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The North well, Pole. Yeah, huh? they, we know where you live. Right. Where you live? I ain't fucking telling you. <laughs> Boca Raton? Six Mile? Six Mile. I uh, was on Six Mile. So the cops told you to move your van? No, till you picked me up and brought me here. <laughs> Kidnapping. <laughs> Santa napping. <laughs> Saint Nick napping. Yeah, all I do with Twitter is this, man. Cause I, you know, I just do I just hit trending just to see mm -hmm. what's being discussed. Like something's in the news. Mm -hmm. Actually, somebody did some news. And then the rest of it is just nonsense. But you have to do social media the way you do life. You gotta pick through What's of substance? You just gotta, you know, navigate around all the BS and the BSers. I mean, you do. I mean, I see people complaining. There's so much hate on Twitter. There's so much. Yeah, that's what people. That's what fuels people these yeah. days. Mm -hmm. So you just ignore it. I mean, so you know what it is now. Now, like people wanted to have the corner marketed on the hate. <laughs> like I, I don't want you to be able to talk. Yep. Exactly. I'm the blue check mark. I talk. I'm the arbiter. Yeah. Right? Now Elon Musk is realizing uh, you're not the arbiter either. Once the cat's out of the bag, nobody can shut it up. Just shut the fucking thing down. I know. I think everybody, before you say anything or before you post something, you should ask yourself, why am I saying this? Like, what do you? what is your reason for saying this? You need to ask yourself that. I mean, and if it makes sense, then you go ahead. And if it doesn't, then... You know, hit delete. If you're the kind of person that's going to ask yourself that, though, I don't know if you're writing that much bad stuff to begin with. You're too thoughtful. Well, Karen, you're maybe. too thoughtful. Maybe I am, but I Okay, don't know. Um, we didn't give out the number. We're not going to give it out now. Uh, Santa, get the phone fixed, can you? It's fixed. <laughs> Santa looks drunk. Okay. You okay, Santa? <laughs> you all right, bro? I'm, I'm good. Let me check your pulse yeah. here. Look at that beard. It's all messy. No, check between my legs. That's where my real pulse is. <laughs> The fuck are you sweating, gravy? <laughs> My balls are sweating. <laughs> the suit's hot. Oh, listen, before we go, one last thing. Uh, uh, I mean, any, there's more. Just one. <laughs> I'm having lunch with White Boy Rick on Tuesday. Oh, okay. What should I order? Where are you going? Cocaine! <laughs> where, where are you? Where, he likes, he likes uh, Joe Muir's. Is that where you're going, Charlie? <laughs> Did I miss the joke? Yeah, cocaine. That's what he yelled. Oh. <laughs> too soon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, too soon. He's only been locked up forever. I guess I didn't get Are that Are you guys joke. going to the pool hall? Maybe uh, for an eight ball? <laughs> you went to prison for like eight kilos of cocaine? I know that, yeah, but that, I'm that, thinking, see, I'm thinking that, but I'm thinking it's not a joke. I'm thinking you're really going to lunch. So I'm saying, I where are you going? going? I am yeah. going but to But I'm lunch. saying, yes. so where are you going? He likes Joe Muir's. Is that where you're going? No. Okay. Well, I don't know <laughs> what you're trying to dox him? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, like, what lunch. are you buying? Where are you going? If, if I tell people, I was they'll just gonna, all show I up. Was just gonna, no, they won't. You can see him. I he, just wanted, what should I order? What do you, what do you order tell when you. you're having lunch with White Boy Ray? Whatever you want, Charlie. Okay, if that's the case, who's freaking up the Tim? I mean, the guy did 30 years. Who invited him to lunch? It's kind of a mutual he's, business he's, meeting. He's, he's okay. got a, he's well, got he, a weed he's, company he's, now. Yeah, he's, but he's making money. Yeah. He's, 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 he, he stepped out very well. So... Okay, so he's got a weed company. Mm -hmm. And he also works for another company. Okay, so he got a weed company. And a job. So. And he got some... I was going to say Taco Bell. No. Oh, you shouldn't do that anyway. Ugh. Weed? If we smoke in the yeah, weed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you think he, is he allowed to smoke? Is he on parole? I don't know, Charlie. <laughs> That's a good question. Hmm. I'll ask him. But he should always be on his best behavior. Well, we're, we're getting Italian. It's a nice Italian place. Mm. Oh, mobster kind of meal, huh? I've been watching him. He's a good boy. Yeah, he's... <laughs> you would like him. He's I not mean, naughty no more? You, you see him out all the time. Yeah. I mean, he's out and around. You know, he's 
friendly, he's nice, you know. All I never, that, I never met him. Uh, yeah, yeah you would think he'd be very bitter, wouldn't you? No, not. I think oh, people I just, after a certain while they come to terms with you know what they have control over and they try to make the best of it. Yeah. And I think that he has made a decent transition. Amazingly, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, he has. Well, so, let me ask me: Are you bitter? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I don't know if he is or not. Should he be bitter? Uh, uh, I would be. I'd yeah, be but what, but what is that going to get him at this point? Being sure. bitter. Sure. I mean, what is what is he going to accomplish? What should he be bitter about the fact that like he did so much time? Yeah, and mandatory minimums were thrown out the window, except for him. And yeah, he there, felt I mean, like there, a setup. There was a whole machine against him in this state, and then this state lets him out, and Florida's like, no, 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 you've had this stolen car ring while you were in prison. You're coming down here now, and it's just it felt like he couldn't win, but now he's out. You're right. I maybe he doesn't maybe he isn't the kind of person to be bitter, but that'd be really hard to drop those feelings. What should I order? Steak. At an Italian restaurant? Uh, veal. Try to the veal. There you go. All right. <laughs> Pasta. <laughs> Try to veal. We'll be here all week, except next week because we're <laughs> off. Well, like, uh, when, what, what, what do we decide we're doing? Nothing. That'll be a surprise. I think we'll be here Monday, right? We'll be here Monday. Yes. We're gonna, mm. or we're not going to be here Thursday because everybody needs to do some Christmas. You got it. Yep. And right, I need Santa? to see a doctor about my genitals because I caught something in the Rio Grande. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you guys have too many germs in here. <laughs> that was a softball, Santa. I was setting you up. <laughs> you want to apologize to Kim? I'm sorry, Kim. I won't tell anybody anything else. <laughs> and Rick, who, who obviously didn't know anything. He knew. <sighs> Apology. It's just a joke. We love you. You're we part love of your you, show. Kim. We love you, son. He's really talented. Uh, going into the new year, man. I'm glad you're part of our life. It's really been a good special edition, right, Karen? It has been. And thank you, Charlie, for bringing us all together for the for the for the good of our community and our state and for mankind. I mean, you are a great person to work with. I had to describe to somebody yesterday how we ended up together. And they were like, wow, I always wonder, you and Charlie, how did this happen? He begged but, me. But no. <laughs> they all do, Charlie. I understand. I begged no. <laughs> you, man. That's on the record. You can Google that. But no, it was just, you know, Charlie and I, had, we forged a mutual respect for each other. You were doing your job. I was doing mine. And I respected that. You always did your homework. And, you know, I'm glad that you're my friend. I have my sign, your note that you gave me. It's on my bulletin board. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to great things in 2023. And I love you. Thank you, Charlie. And try to love one another. And listen. Wayne County guy. Hope you get to see the kid this month. Let it go. That's all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Santa. Merry Christmas. My name's Papa Gijo. <laughs> Santa needs AA. Or Papa Noel. <laughs> Gotta keep changing my name. So long. <laughs>